friends, here's my recap of study article 43 entitled, Jehovah is Directing His Organization. This will be studied at Jehovah's Witness meetings the week of December the 21st through the 27th, 2020. Here it is, friends. Look at a few lines of song number 40. It says, the title, To Whom Do We Belong? To whom do you belong? Which God will you now obey? For one God is false and one is true. So make your choice. It's up to you. Isn't that interesting? I'm sure you know how John 1, 1 reads in the New World Translation. I have it listed there. In the beginning was the Word, capitalized, and the Word was with God, and the Word was a God. So the question is, which one is the false God? The Jehovah of the Watchtower organization? Or Jesus, who is, according to the New World Translation, a God? This is what we're going to explore in this Jehovah's Witness publication. So let's dive in. The preview says, are you convinced that Jehovah is directing his organization today? Well, the question is, who is Jehovah? Because the governing body admits that they are not inspired, yet Jehovah is directing his organization. Who is this Jehovah? Paragraph one states, there in the box in blue, are you baptized? If so, you have publicly expressed your faith in Jehovah and your willingness to serve with his organization. Friends, I've been over this so many times. I know you know this, but getting baptized Jehovah's way goes contrary to scripture, which says to baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe whatever Jesus commands them. Jesus promises to be with his followers until the end of the world. So who is this Jehovah who at baptism, according to paragraph one, you publicly express your faith in him and willingness to serve with his organization? Becoming a baptized Jehovah's Witness is completely different than being baptized according to the Holy Bible. So who is this Jehovah? First, God is not partial. Love moved Jehovah to give his son as a ransom for all. Well, friends, that's not what 1 Timothy 2, 6 says. Over on the right, we're going to start at the verse prior, verse 5. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. Isn't that interesting? Where's the governing body in this verse? Who gave himself a ransom for all, to be testified in due time. Jesus gave himself a ransom for all. Jehovah has done nothing. Listen, John 19 verses 30 says, when Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, it is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. Jesus said it's finished. The Greek word was to telestai. That signifies the payment, the canceling, the satisfying of debt. When Jesus died, he left no unfinished business behind. It was finished. Jehovah, the God of the Watchtower organization, is trying to take credit for something that Jesus has done. So the question is, who is the true God and who is the false God that song number 40 talks about? But let's move on to paragraph five. It says, Jesus's followers received the Holy Spirit at Pentecost 33. With the help of that spirit, they immediately began to preach and in a short time, thousands accepted the good news. Well, what good news did they accept? We're going to jump back a few verses in Acts chapter 2 to find out. Acts 2 is a great chapter. Remember when Jesus had died, a prophecy was fulfilled when it said all the, the sheep will scatter. And that's what happened. All of the disciples and apostles, they took off, right? But what happened three days later? Jesus rose from the dead. And Acts chapter 2 records the manner in which the sheep who had scattered reacted after Jesus raised bodily from the dead. They spoke and preached boldly. But what did they preach about? They preached about Jesus. That's what following Jesus does to a person. So read Acts chapter 2 now with that context in mind because it's really a great chapter. But for now, I want to take a look at a few verses. So 
Acts 2.41 was what is cited in the paragraph. It says, Then they that gladly received his word were baptized, and the same day they were added unto them about 3,000 souls. Verse 22. Ye men of Israel, hear these words, Jesus of Nazareth, the man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs. This Jesus has God raised up, whereof we all are witnesses. Hmm, witnesses of Jesus. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. So the good news that paragraph 5 says that thousands accepted is the good news about the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. No doubt about it. But this paragraph also cites Acts chapter 4, verse 4. That says, Howbeit many of them which heard the word believed, and the number of the men was about 5,000. Well, let's go to verses 1 through 3. And as they spoke to the people, the priests, the captain of the temple, and the Sadducees came upon them, being grieved that they taught the people and preached through Jesus the resurrection from the dead. And they laid hands on them and put them in hold until the next day, for it was now eventide. Well, of course, Watchtower is not going to cite those few verses. So friends, who's the apostate? What word did they believe? The word was about the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. The paragraph continues, when opposition arose, the disciples did not give in to fear, but turned to God for help. They prayed, grant to your slaves to keep speaking the word with all boldness. They were then filled with Holy Spirit and kept speaking the word of God with boldness. So they cite Acts 4 verses 18 through 20, but I'm just going to read verses 18 underlined. It says, and they called them and commanded them not to speak at all, nor teach in the name of Jesus. They also cite verses 29 through 31, but I'm going to read verses 30. It says, By stretching forth your hand to heal, and that signs and wonders may be done by the name of thy holy child, Jesus. So friends, the opposition was because they were speaking in the name of Jesus, not Jehovah, the God of the Watchtower Corporation. So who's the false God, friends? Think about it. But let's move on to paragraph six. Within just a few decades, they had preached the good news in all creation under heaven. They cite Colossians 1, 6, but I am going to jump back to Colossians 1, 4 and read what's underlined. Since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus, and then I'm going to read verse six, which they cite, which is come unto you as it is in all the world and brings forth fruit as it does also in you since the day you heard of it and knew the grace of God and truth. Where's the presence of Jehovah, the God of the Watchtower Corporation? It's not here. It's all about Christ. They also cite Colossians 1 verse 23, but down at the bottom, let's just take a look at verse 20. And having made peace through the blood of his cross by him to reconcile all things unto himself, by him I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. Then verse 23, which they cited, if you continue in the faith grounded and settled, what faith? The faith in Jesus Christ, and not be moved away from the hope of the gospel. What gospel? The gospel of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, which you have heard, and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven, whereof I, Paul, am made a minister. I don't see Jehovah anywhere in these scriptures. And the Watchtower Corporation is trying to pull the verses out of context to make it appear that they apply to the preaching work of the Jehovah's Witnesses. But it's very clear who the false god is here. But we're just going to continue moving forward to paragraph 7. In modern times, Jehovah continues to direct and empower his people. The direction, of course, comes largely through God's spirit-inspired word. There we find a record of Jesus' ministry and his command that his followers continue the work he started. Well, if Jehovah was the true God, why would he not guide the organization to baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit? Because once again, they cite Matthew 28, 19, and 20, which says to do that. Why is that, friends? Paragraph 7 also states, As far back as July 1881, this magazine could say, We were not called nor anointed to receive honor and amass wealth 
but to spend and to be and be spent and to preach the good news. Well, I just had to see exactly what this magazine had to say. So, of course, here it is, Zion's Watchtower, July and August, 1881. Notice what it says on page 223. This is interesting. In the box, the Second Advent church people and many in the denominations interested in the Lord's coming and expecting him in the flesh have turned their attention to 1881 and feel confident that they will see Jesus with their natural eyes this year. Their hopes are based partly upon an old rhyme called Mother Shipton's Prophecy, which concludes thus, the world unto an end will come in 1881, and partly upon the teachings of the Great Pyramid of Egypt, whose grand gallery measures 1,881 pyramid inches. This grand gallery is supposed to symbolize the gospel dispensation, and its 1881 inches are supposed to teach that the gospel dispensation will be 1,881 years long. Not a prophetic period can be claimed as they are all past. Now to us, these things seem a poor and weak foundation for the hopes built upon them. Our belief that the Lord is present is based on the more sure word of prophecy, which is the Bible, to which Peter said we would do well to take heed. Now here's the page that contains the quote in the box. And to proclaim that good news now that in due time we might be glorified and perform the things now preached. We were not called nor anointed to receive honor and amass wealth, but to spend and be spent and to preach the good news. So Watchtower's belief is that, look on the bottom box, which is on the very same page, about one paragraph or so below what Sunday's Watchtower quoted. It says, the day of vengeance of our God is the time of fire or purifying trouble in which the world and all the church, except the little flock, are to be tried and purged and made ready for the blessings of the millennial age. It is this day of the Lord in which from the prophetic evidences, we believe we have been since 1874 and which we believe will continue with increasing severity, first on nominal Zion and secondly upon the world until 1914. The first seven years of which as hereto shown are years of favor and end in October of this year. So I have to ask you, who's the false God? But listen, they also quote from a 1919 booklet called, To Whom the Work is Entrusted. Take a look. On the top left, To Whom the Work is Entrusted, a booklet published in 1919 stated, the work appears stupendous, but it is the Lord's and in his strength, we will perform it. This booklet that they refer to, it's basically a salesman's handbook. They call them coal porters on how to distribute the Golden Age magazine. You can pause the slides if you'd like to, but it includes scripts and requirements for the collection and surrendering of the money that was collected for Golden Age subscriptions. So look at the box in the middle of the page there, giving tips on how to sell these, these magazines. It says, it is non-sectarian and undenominational and not in the interest of any system. It fills a long felt want in the homes. The subscription price for one year, 26 issues is only $1.50. Friends, this is in 1919, okay? It also goes on to say, have a subscription blank ready by this time and present it to be signed. Be brief. Do not talk too much. This current magazine quotes from a 1919 booklet about it being the Lord's work and it's stupendous and that through God's strength, they will perform it. But the publication that they, they quote from is just a, a salesman's guide. It doesn't talk about the Lord. 
talks about how to sell magazines. It's awful. But anyway, we're just going to continue analyzing this study article. Paragraph eight. Jehovah's Organization has used the best tools available to spread the good news. Seriously? Their best tools just can't get anything right, can they? Paragraph eight also claims there in the box, Jehovah is impartial. He foretold that the good news would be declared to every nation and tribe and tongue and people. Revelation 14, six and seven. There's the verse, Revelation six. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth. This is a future event. The angel has the gospel. And this occurs during the tribulation. It's a future event, not an event that has been going on for more than 100 years via the Watchtower organization. We're going to move along to paragraph 10 in the box. It says, we are doing God's work. But I wonder what God, because he surely can't get anything right. Look at paragraph 11. In the first century, the governing body in Jerusalem worked unitedly to maintain order and peace among God's people. So Acts 2.42, it says, and they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. Where does it say governing body? Are they saying now that the apostles were the governing body? But listen, we're going to move on to paragraph 12 because it mentions an 1895 Zion's Watchtower article. But look, they use an ellipsis, which usually means they're leaving something out. It says in the box, as far back as 1895, Zion's Watchtower and Herald of Christ's Presence of November 15th had an article entitled, Decently an Order and an Order, based on 1 Corinthians 14.40. The article stated, the apostles had much to say to the early church concerning order, dot, dot, dot. It's safe to continue to heed very carefully the things written aforetime for our admonition. Well, isn't it nice that I have that November 15th, 1895 Zion's Watchtower. So let's see what they left out. See the purple arrow there? This is what was cited in the paragraph. The apostles had much to say to the early church concerning order, dot, dot, dot. Now here's what they left out in the assemblies of the saints. And apparently we have been rather negligent of this wise counsel, feeling it to be of rather minor importance because the church is so near the end of her course and the harvest is a time of separating. Now here's where the paragraph picked up after the dot, dot, dot. It is safe to continue to heed very carefully the things written aforetime for our admonition. Of course, they didn't say the next line, though the time is short to the end of our earthly pilgrimage. Friends, this article is, what, 125 years old? Yet Watchtower quotes from it, but they leave out a very, very important part, that back in 1895, they thought the end was right around the corner. Very, very deceptive. Why not quote from a paragraph where they got something right? You had 125 years of publications. Why quote from this one? Interesting. It's like they're telling you they're false prophets and they know you're not going to be able to find this publication. Very sad. But I have to ask you, remember from Song 40, who's the false God? Let's move on to paragraph 13. What you can do. Jehovah wants his people to maintain the oneness of the spirit and the uniting bond of peace. So ask yourself, do I promote unity and peace in the congregation? Am I obedient, obedient to those taking the lead? They cite Ephesians 4, 1 through 3, which is in purple. And that says, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you were called. But given that Paul starts verse 1 saying, I therefore, we must see to what he is referring. So the verse prior to Ephesians 4, verse 1 is chapter 3, verse 21, which is on the top. It says, 
Unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. They're talking about Jesus Christ, friends. They're talking about the church by Christ Jesus, the church who serves Jesus, not Jehovah, the God of Watchtower. But it's funny that in the paragraph, they cite Ephesians 4 verses 1 through 3, which we had read in purple. But let's take a look at the next two verses. There is one body and one spirit, even as you are called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, and then look at that, one baptism. And we know from the book of Matthew that you are to baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So who is Jehovah, the God of the Watchtower Corporation? This God, whose name is Jehovah, is different than the God of the Bible whose name is Jehovah. It's a copycat. He's a deceiver. So listen, the rest of paragraph 13 exhorts the reader to question their behavior. They cite James chapter 3 verses 17, which talks about pure worship without hypocrisy, which is really kind of funny here. Look at what's underlined. They say, if you see room for improvement, Pray for Holy Spirit. Listen, friends, when we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, the Holy Spirit takes up residence within us and we become the temple of the Holy Spirit. Listen, the Jewish temple was destroyed in the year 70 because Jesus had nailed the, ordin the ordinances of the law for righteousness sake. Therefore, he was the Lamb of God. He was that sinless sacrifice there was no need for the sacrificing of animals to cover man's sins until Messiah came. Those sacrifices occurred at the temple, which was destroyed. Christ's followers are now the temple. So who's the false God? Jehovah's followers must pray for the Holy Spirit. Do you see that it's not capitalized in the paragraph there? So I must ask, what Holy Spirit? It's not the Holy Spirit of the Bible. The Holy Spirit of the Bible is capitalized. Is it Jehovah's Holy Spirit? The God of Watchtower's Holy Spirit? But he's a false God. So for which spirit do Jehovah's Witnesses pray? Paragraph 15 says, in modern times, Jehovah foretold that in the final part of the days, people of all nations would flock to his figurative mountain to be instructed about his ways. We are seeing that prophecy being fulfilled. True worship has been exalted far above all forms of unclean worship. I can't spend too much time here, friends, but they did not cite Isaiah 2 verses 1, which says in purple down at the bottom, the word that Isaiah, the son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. Okay? Then it goes into the two verses that the Watchtower cited. Friends, listen, when you read in scripture, people were always going up to Jerusalem, up to Jerusalem. That's God's mountain. It's not a figurative mountain. Where the paragraph says that we are seeing that prophecy being fulfilled. Paragraph 16 in the box, it says, Instruct me, O Jehovah, about your way. I will walk in your truth. What truth? We looked back at the old publications that they had quoted from and their, their lies. They keep... Anyway, I'm not even going to get into it, but what truth? Hmm? What truth does Jehovah provide for you? Any of you lived through 1975? I did. Guess what? January 1st, 1976 came. What is Jehovah's truth? Tell me that. We're going to keep going here. At the end of paragraph 16 at the top, it says, and to do your very best when you have a part on the program. In these ways, you show Jehovah and his son that you love their precious sheep. Listen, friends, it's not their sheep. It's Jesus's sheep. Who's the good shepherd? Jesus is the good shepherd. Jehovah, <laughs> Jehovah doesn't have sheep, friends. Jehovah has slaves, right? The God of Watchtower has slaves. The paragraph cites John 21, 15 through 17, and I'm gonna just read what's underlined. 
Jesus said to Simon Peter, that's when he asked if he loved him. Yea, Lord, you know I love you, he said. Feed my lambs, then down further. Feed my sheep, and again, feed my sheep. Where is Jehovah even mentioned in this? Paragraph 17. Soon, the only organization left on earth will be the one led by Jehovah's Spirit. That's a lie. So zealously work with Jehovah's organization. Reflect God's impartial love for people by proclaiming the good news to all you need. Well, if you want to proclaim the good news, friends, you proclaim the news about Jesus Christ, because that's what the Bible tells you to do. Jesus came as the perfect spotless lamb to take away the sins of the world. He said it is finished right before he died. That's it. He paid the price. He gave himself for a ransom for you. That is what the apostles and the disciples were preaching after his resurrection in Acts chapter 2. There was no governing body there, friends. That is such a joke. This organization is lying to you. They're quoting from publications and they're leaving out very important details with their dot, dot, dot. It's like they're making a mockery of their followers because they're telling you the truth, but they're concealing it. And they're destroying their old publications so that you can't go back and look for yourself. But they're still out there, friends. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the light. We were never in the truth. Do you know why? Because Jesus is the truth. He's not the way to the truth. Jesus is the truth. Put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ today, and you will know that you have eternal life. Do it today, friends. It's a matter of a simple prayer between you and him. Cry out to him. Ask him to reveal himself to you, and he will. That's it, friends. Thanks so much for watching and taking the time to like and subscribe to my videos. I hope you have a great day.